Look up, Oklahoma. Sky 5's got you covered. Three Oklahoma men are in a Denver, Colorado hospital tonight following a plane crash at Stapleton International Airport. Good evening, I'm Kathy Weiss. Investigation into the crash of Delta Flight 191 in Dallas continues. The National Transportation Safety Board is trying to find out why air traffic controllers did not relay a fresh weather forecast to the pilots of that plane. The NTSB's chief investigator at the site, Patrick Bursley, says a new forecast was delivered to the controllers about 10 minutes before the crash, but was never passed on to the pilots. He says we're looking into whether it was required to be passed on and what the implications of that might have been. 133 people died in that crash. Oklahoma City resident died early this morning from gunshot wounds he received last night. Police are not releasing the name of the victim until next of kin is notified. The victim apparently was involved in a domestic argument with two other people. Police do have a suspect in the shooting. The charges probably will be filed as murder uh, Monday after the information is passed on the district attorney's office against a Gilbert Davis, who is a black male in his 30s. Police described Davis as a black male with slender build and a short afro. Allegedly shot the police chief of Roland, Oklahoma, 36-year-old Donald Pugh and 38-year-old Melvin Coots. Also faced charges of drug possession and possession of a firearm after a former conviction. Chief Donald Wayne Edwards is in good condition tonight in a Fort Smith, Arkansas hospital. An Oklahoma City family is without a home tonight after their apartment was heavily damaged by a fire earlier. Fire department officials blame the fire on careless smoking habits. They say a cigarette was left smoldering on a couch. No one was at home at the time. Lead a trade mission to the country of India. Representatives of Oklahoma oil and gas firms are expected to go along. The group will visit several cities, including Bombay, New Delhi, and Calcutta. Meanwhile, Nye says he expects a major announcement from the Orient regarding Oklahoma by this fall, but he declined, declined to say which Far East company would be involved. Yet if the Hitachi Com Corporation did decide to locate in Oklahoma, there are more than 40 sites available. One who says let, she's a, let us 19 <laughs> sense ahead, go to the store and they look at the lettuce. That's what we want them to do. We want them to come to Oklahoma and look at this building that's 100,000 square feet. Owned for industrial use with more than 5 million square feet. Still to come on 5 Alive News tonight, a satisfying survey about Social Security. But next, a scary day around a union carbide plant. Stay with us. is sending nearly 200 people to hospitals and trapping thousands more inside their homes for a few hours. A Union Carbide spokesman says the cloud was aldicarb oxime, which is made from the same ingredient that leaked from a plant in Bhopal, India last year, killing more than 2,000 people, but it does not contain that same ingredient. He was stoned, and, to stoned to death and his body burned by a group who had attended funeral services earlier in the day. The mourners were angry after hearing funeral service speeches calling for the violent overthrow of the white minority government. The killing took place after services for a South African civil rights leader. Weather-wise, Fred says there's no break in the heat until Tuesday. The forecast is coming up on 5 Alive News tonight. You, microwave oven owners, here I am. The new microfreeze bag from the makers of Ziploc. It's the grand open. Weary runners in Oklahoma City tonight. Glad to be back home and proud to have helped a worthy cause. Earlier today, Whitewater employees finished the fourth annual Leukemia Run. The runners began their fundraising effort on the outskirts of Dallas on Friday afternoon. Each runner had to gather at least $250 in pledges in order to participate. The pledges ranged from 25 cents to a dollar a mile. The people who ran really wanted to do it. This year was real different. We had, everybody was up. It was always real good attitudes. We had no problems within each other at all. So we got a great time. We stopped in Armour and Paul's Valley, and in one of the stops, or both the stops, we met a little girl named Gina Kilter, and she had leukemia, and she was just a doll, and seeing somebody like that made us just want to go out and, you know, just hurry up and get back on the road. The proceeds from the run will go to the Leukemia Society of America. I think I'm still astounded at the length of the run there. That's a long God. run. Well, and the weather wasn't really great for that at all because, among other things, weathermen lied a little bit last night. I thought the cold air would last a little bit into today. It snuffed out early this morning, and it was gone, and we soared right up there. Much of that route they covered was 95 to 100 degrees, so those young people really did put out on that. Let's see what we're doing out there right now. We've cooled down, but not as... 
well as we'd really like. We're only down to 85 degrees, even though we have clear skies. And we'll probably only drop about 10 more by morning. Winds are southeast at 10 at times today over parts of the state up near Ponca City and out in the west in particular. It gusted close to 25. Most of the state, though, most of the day was around 16, 18 miles an hour. It was quite breezy, and it'll stay a little breezy all evening. Humidity sitting on 46%, and our pressure is rising. As far as those morning lows went, <clears throat> well, what happened, those southerly winds we talked about coming in later today, didn't pay any attention to me. They came right in early and took right over and shot the temperatures right on up. So, for instance, Gage, which had 62 for a low last night, wound up with 72 uh, last night, 62 the night before. So that was a jump of 10 degrees, and all of the morning lows were in the 70s, and then they all came zooming up into the 90s, and not just 90s. Park City had 100, Hobart had 100, 103 down at Aldous, and down in the Dallas area it was close to 100. So. That run was a hot one all the way through the last day or two. Now, as far as the EarthScan satellite goes, you can see how the clouds have cleared out. There's been heavy weather around the country. Three tornadoes touched down up in South Dakota. They didn't cause any damage or injuries without an open country, but it shows you these storms were heavy and spotty, and the main punch of the next front is going to be up north. Once again, just the tail end is barely going to drag down into our area. But there were flash flood watches out for part of Arizona and New Mexico, and some of those areas got close to three inches. Same thing in Arkansas, some spotty rains of an inch and a half in an hour. Louisiana, same thing. So it was spotty, but it was to the east of us, to the west of us, to the north of us. But Texas, for a change, really didn't get very much, and you can see we're wide open. And the reason being, that front took a little surge and really whipped on up there. So the warm air just rammed in here, and I thought it would last a little longer than it did, but it's gone now, so that was the end of it. So we had roughly 24 hours of cool weather. Now, cool weather off to the north and east of us and off to the northwest. Good old Butte, Montana. I always wonder why they call it Butte. Their weather's something unusual, to say the least. Today, their high temperature for the day was 48 degrees. So you can see that was quite a little surge of cool air. Salt Lake City had a record low high of 72. And in spite of all that, though, it's going to be one of those storms that will turn around and whip off to the east, cause some more severe weather in the northern plains and all sorts of action, and just the tail end will come on in here tomorrow. But the front will be snuggling into the panhandle by tomorrow evening. And we'll have a good surge of cool air with it, but notice we didn't point the arrow down this way. We rammed it over this way, and we'll have warm air coming at us from two directions and a little bit of shower activity creeping into the northwest. And by Tuesday and Wednesday, you've got a fair chance, just a fair chance, no guarantees promised of getting your lawn watered free. In the meantime, we'll be in the 90s once again with hundreds nearby, nice cool weather up north. Tonight, we'll go to that southeast flow. We'll have clear and warm condition. Everybody's still in the 70s, and just a little breeze, no big wind. And tomorrow, I think the showers mainly will just clip the northwestern quarter of the state late in the day, then very late tomorrow morning or tomorrow night and early the next morning. A few of them may trickle across the state, but don't wait by the telephone with sandwiches for a big rain, and we won't get that, and we won't get a big change. We'll cool off a little bit. Tonight, warm and windy and 75 for low. Tomorrow, right up there with the rest of them, another cooker. 96 degrees, and tomorrow night I think we'll go on down only to about 74 degrees, but I think in the metro area it'll just be high cloudiness, the rain will all be in the northwest. Tuesday, a little better chance of sprinkling it around the state, and Wednesday, a fair chance of getting the lawn watered free, and it'll cool us off a little bit to 91, nothing too great. Thursday, we'll clear off and only get up to 90, so I think we'll at least get rid of this upper 90, 100 stuff, which I don't really care for. No, me either. Thank you, Fred. Thanks, Fred. Popular and going on 50. Stories not about me or Fred. We'll explain when we come back on 5 Alive News tonight. No matter how bad the bucks. The pension program, one of the most successful and popular programs ever established by the federal government. In Oklahoma, about 500,000 people benefit from Social Security. The majority of them are over 65 and represented by the American Association of Retired Persons. AARP spokesmen say the 50-year existence of Social Security is worth celebrating, but AARP wants more from the system in the next 50 years. Your name, it hasn't really been adequate in the sense of enabling... Closings could cause much hardship on recipients. Thing, ...they would have difficulty applying for Social Security. For, a num for another, uh, they couldn't present their case if a problem occurred. Great. 
AARP represents a membership of 200,000 elderly Oklahomans. Social Security is pretty popular with young... ...to find that the elderly strongly support the Social Security program. What surprised the American Association of Retired Persons and the pollster the group hired was the strong support for Social Security among younger people. 60% of non-retired respondents said Social Security is one of the government's most important programs. And 70% of non-retired people said that the taxes they pay into Social Security are about right or aren't enough. Pollster Florence Skelly describes what the children of the elderly are thinking. My mother-in-law coming to live with me, I could not even face the notion. I want my parents to be able to take care of themselves. Among all those surveyed, 87% oppose that the program will be able to continue as is. All the same, the elderly lobby likes what it sees. The survey sort of backs up what we Live news, the Washington Bureau. The Retired Persons Association plans to remind members of Congress of the results of this survey should they again become inclined to consider cutting Social Security benefits. Two old pros go head-to-head -head for the PGA Championship. Dick Pryor has that and more next on Five Alive Sports tonight. Well, it's the, the, uh, the old pros, as they say, uh, taught the young guys a lesson out there today. They sure did. They played some good golf. It was Great an exciting golf. finish and just what we expected. The young Turks took a backseat to a couple of old pros today in Denver. Former U.S. Open champion Hubert Green and defending PGA champ Lee Trevino turned the final round of the PGA into a two-man affair, with Green holding off Trevino down the stretch to win it. Hubie vaulted into a three-stroke lead with a 70 yesterday and put everyone on notice early today, shipping in from the fringe on seven to move to six under par, a shot ahead of Trevino. But Lee promptly kept pace with his playing partner, five shots back with one hole to go. Green found the bunker on his approach shot at 18, but in the style of a true champion, he blasted out off the flagstick, and he had an easy tap-in for a two-stroke victory. A great shot by Hubie Green. He wins his second major title. Hubert Green, the winner of the PGA. Lee Trevino finishes second. Two runs of their own in the bottom of the second. Also going the homer route, Chucky Kennedy belted a two-run shot off the old scoreboard in left, and it was tied at two. A massive blow by Chucky Kennedy. The Niners win in front for the first time in the bottom of the third on a tremendous home run by Ellis Valentine. But the Zephyrs rallied, and they went on to win 7-6. to six. They Two were. runs. Dave Winfield's drive rattles around for a while, allowing Don Mattingly to score from first. And Winfield got a triple on the play. The next batter up, Ken Griffey, lofted a fly to Jim Rice in left. Now, kids, this is just not the way to play this ball. Rice should do better than this for $2 million a year. Win first American League 15-game winner as New York beats Boston 5-3. Cleveland over Detroit. Chicago beat Milwaukee 4-1. Toronto over Kansas City in 10 innings. Seattle first place, Long Pittsburgh. Six to five. Now to auto racing. As you can see right here, they had a tight race at the NASCAR Champions Park. Disposed of Claudia Cody Kilch to win her fourth Canadian Open Championship. Last night in Wichita Falls, Oklahoma scored an exciting 13 to 12 victory over Texas in the 48th Oil Blend. Texas led six to nothing. Oklahoma, though, got on the board late in the second quarter. An interception by Jesse Glazier of Tulsa Hale gave them the ball at the 25 yard line. They then marched 75 yards on seven plays to go up 7-6. to six. Shell Henry of pitcher scored the go-ahead TD on a 34-yard run. Texas regained the lead, though, in the third quarter. And their touchdown came on a seven-yard dash. An exciting game. It was a better, good game. Better than a lot of the college games and pro games. Possibly so. <laughs> well, we'll have a lot of players to watch out of that yeah, game. Yeah, really. All right, thanks, Dick. Thank you, Dick. The King remembered. We'll show you some fans when we come back on 5 Alive News tonight. King of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, died eight years ago this week, but even in death, his popularity continues to grow. The annual pilgrimage to Graceland Mansion in Memphis is already underway. Every year, people from all over the world come here. There won't be there another Elvis. Fan clubs have come here from as far away as Sweden, and 40,000 people are expected at Graceland before the week is out. Gosh, they get that year-round, though. Yeah. It's, 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 Memphis it's is pretty a, big for that.
Unbelievable. I've been known to climb over the gates at Graceland. <laughs> you have. Shouldn't admit that. I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for us this weekend. Chris Bond has the first news of the day tomorrow at 6.53 a.m. Good night. Good night. a presentation of Five Alive News, recognized as the leader in Oklahoma broadcast journalism.